Good morning, Abiding Faith Christian Church. Thank you for joining our Sunday morning worship service. I pray that the worship this morning blesses you as well as the Word of God blesses you. At this time, you can stand wherever you are so that we can begin to worship such an awesome God that we have, such an awesome God that we serve. So just go ahead and stand wherever you are, if you're in your living room, if you're in your car, wherever you may be, and just begin to worship him because he's worthy of all praise and honor because he's such an awesome God. Lord, we thank you. We magnify you, Father God. We bless you, Lord. Thank you for being so good to us, Father God. Even when we don't deserve it, God, we thank you. You are such an awesome God. Amen. Thank God so much for Sister Lynette, Brother Joshua, for that ministry of music. Amen. He is an awesome God, and we praise God for this day that he's given us. 
I hope everyone's doing well today, and we're going to celebrate and thank God for what he's going to do in all of our lives. There may be a scripture that I'd like to share this with you before I get started um, from James 1 and 5. It came back. It says, um, James 1 verse, actually verse 2, it says, uh, count it all joy when you when counted all joy when you fall into various trials three says knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience all right in some scriptures it may say endurance the faith produces endurance amen people of faith don't easily give up it produces endurance so but let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. People of faith, don't give up easily. Amen. And in fact, if you are a person that's impatient, then maybe we're talking about faithless instead of having faith. Amen. So think about that. Faith produces patience, endurance. And if I'm an impatient person, then maybe that says a lot about my faith. Praise God. Welcome. Let's go to the God God in in prayer. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We we magnify your holy name this morning. And Lord, we pray that you would build our faith this day, O Lord. Strengthen us in our faith, O Father, so that we now, Lord, can continue with all the patience that's needed to endure whatever comes up. I pray now, Lord, that you will move against all evil, everything the enemy has purposed this day uh, to hinder us, to slow us down, to even confuse us concerning the vision you have already purposed for our life. I pray that you'll move now, Lord, favorably for us so that we will have uh, that clarity of vision as to what now, Lord, you want and expect of us. We want to bless you and praise you. I lift up abiding faith now, Lord. I lift up all of our friends and all of our family today. I pray for those now, Lord, that are still yet grieving the loss of family members and loved ones and friends. I pray that your hands of protection, your comfort will be all around them this day. Be their strength. This morning, O Lord, be their strength. You said that you are a present help in the time of trouble. Be the strength that those that are grieving are in need of right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you so much and we praise you for everything you're going to do for us. Bless this service, O Lord. Bless this word, O God. Let your anointing and the angels come and help me minister uh, today, O Lord. Keep me sound in wisdom and knowledge and understanding, O Father, that I might be a blessing to the people of God. O God, we pray that you would under uh, undo all those heavy burdens and that you would uh, set those that are bound free In mind, Lord, mentally, oh God, break those yokes this morning, that depression, that depression this morning, break it, oh Father, in the name of Jesus. And we want you to scatter all evil, oh Father, in the name of Jesus. Move it far from our homes, from our jobs, from the places that we now, Lord, uh, visit and, and have business. God, move all evil, all works of evil, cancel every assignment that the enemy has purposed against us this day in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you all of the glory this morning and we give you praise in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. He is an awesome God. Thank you for sharing that song this morning too, sister Lynette. Amen. Amen. My morning sermon or or word is going to be God has a a strategy that works. How many believe that God has a strategy that works? He has a strategy that works. That, that's the, uh, the sermon title. But let me just give uh, God some uh, glory right now for the people that have blessed us. Uh, with special thanks to all of the women of the Garden Hour, uh, Dr. Karen Harmon, 
uh, Elder Ernestine Gardner, Sister Shirley Jennings, I just want to say God bless you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Buresh, for the light that you still add to the vision uh, that God gave me over 10 years ago for the Garden Hour. And for those that are listening, the Garden Hour is uh, a vision that God gave me for the women of the church to empower uh, the women in, in this ministry. Um, not only in the kingdom of God, but in all and every aspect of their life. So I, I praise God so much for uh, the women of the Garden Hour who continue to undergird this ministry also in prayer. And I thank God so much. It wasn't just for the older women, but for all women uh, to empower them in the kingdom of God and in all aspects of their lives. Praise God. I have something I want to share. We, we want God to be fully operational in our lives. We want God to be fully operational in our lives. He is omnipresent. He's everywhere. Amen. And we want God to be fully operational in our lives at all times. Um, let's put God in control. And how do we do that? We just say a simple prayer. Have your way, Lord have your way. It's a simple prayer, but we want God to be fully operational in every area of our life, not just some things, all things. Amen. Not just a little bit. Give him everything fully operational. Amen. Um, and I have another little uh, exhortation down here, starting a rumor to stop a blessing. This was a, an old teaching from years ago where um, people would start a rumor to prevent somebody else from being blessed. Amen. And you have to be careful when you start rumors based on what you feel and discouraging somebody else from really benefiting from what you just may not like. Starting a rumor to stop a blessing. Praise God. Make sure that you don't start rumors to stop the blessing that somebody else may really, really be in need of. Praise the Lord. At this time, I'm going to uh, just talk a little bit about worship. And I, I was thinking about worship earlier uh, during the week, but I give you a definition of what worship is as we continue in our exhortation. Uh, worship is an act of religious devotion, usually directed towards a deity. For many, worship is not about an emotion. It is more a recognition of a God. An act of worship may be performed individually, in an informal or formal group, or by a designated leader. Like we had a worship uh, leader this morning with Sister Lynette. That was our worship leader this morning that led us in worship. Such acts may involve honoring, all right? You honor God through also your obedience. When we worship God, we honor God, but we honor God through our obedience. This is a part of the exhortation in John, the fourth chapter, 23rd to the 24th verse. It says, but an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. There's the only way that you can worship God. Truth, in truth, heart, amen, from the heart. If I have a lot of envy going on inside, a lot of jealousy or hatred or whatever, I can't worship him. I can't bring forth um, true worship, all right? But the time is coming when he met this woman at the well and told her all our business. And of course, she said that, you know, we worship God in this place. But he said, no, it's not going to be where you're going to have to worship him in a temple or a building or whatever. But the time will come where you will worship him in spirit, in spirit and in truth. Amen. Some people believe that if I could just get to the church building, then I can really worship God. No, wherever you are, you carry your worship with you. Amen. 
You carry your worship with you. That's from John 4, 23. In Revelations 4, 11, it says, Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and because of your will, they existed and were created. Worship him. Worthy of all glory. Amen. He created all things. Here's another scripture that deals with worship. For we are the true circumcision who worship in spirit, in the spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus. And we put no confidence in the flesh. We are the true circumcision who worship in the spirit of God and the glory of Jesus Christ and no confidence in the flesh. Praise God. All right. Now I'm going to share with you a word from um, Exodus, from the book of Exodus. Amen. God has a strategy that works. In Exodus, verse uh, starting uh, uh, chapter 13, starting at verse 17, and we'll read a few verses. Um, from 17 to, to uh, 22. Strategy that works. When Pharaoh finally let the people go, God did not lead them along the main road that runs through the Philistine territory, even though that was the shortest route. So in this particular scripture, you've got to get the mind of God. Although there was a shorter route all right. He didn't lead them through that particular route. He led them um, in a different way. God said, if the people, he said, and even though if that was the shortest route to the promised land, God said, if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God was what? Planning this whole thing out. If I take them the shorter route, and sometimes we like to take shortcuts, but that may not be the best route for us to take the shortcut. He said, if they go that way, more than likely they're going to see what? Something uh, that the enemy is going to be there to fight or whatever. And it may be in their minds that tell them, let's, let's go back to, to Egypt. So God was smart. He led them around. God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness toward the Red Sea. Thus, the Israelites light, left Egypt like an army ready for battle. That's how they left when they were leaving Egypt. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for Joseph had made uh, the sons of Israel swear to do this. He said, God will certainly come to help you. When he does, you must take my bones with you from this place. And of course, Joseph in Genesis, it talks about when he was dying. He said, don't leave my bones here. Take my bones with you, for God is going to, to help you. The Israelites left Sukkoth and encamped at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud and provided light at night with a pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel by day or by night. And the Lord did not remove the pillar of cloud or pillar of fire from its place in front of the people. What does that say? God was always with the people. Although they had come out, he was leading them, leading them, but he was always with them. We have to also remember, God said in scripture, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that cloud by day, that pillar of fire by night was there to what? Guide them along the way. God will never leave you. Very good. Amen. Let's re read uh, a little more. Okay, so that was, uh, let's read uh, Exodus, take to Exodus, the 14th chapter. The 14th chapter. And what I want you to do is gather uh, from these scriptures how God um, plans things. He's very strategic in his planning. He doesn't just do things off the cuff. You know, like sometimes we do things, just jump up and we just do it. We have no plans. God is very methodical in his planning. 
Exodus 14, 1 through 15 says, Then the Lord gave these instructions to Moses. Order the Israelites to turn back and camp by pi Harath between Migdal and the sea. Camp there along the shore across from Baal Zephon. Then Pharaoh will think the Israelites are confused. Look at God's strategy. He tells him to camp in one place. So what? He would also put a message in the mind of Pharaoh to confuse him. They are trapped in the wilderness. And once again, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will chase after you. I have planned this in order to display my glory through Pharaoh, always with the plan. It wasn't just haphazardly that he came up with this. He said, I want to do this because I need to show Pharaoh something. And, and once again, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and will chase and he will chase after you. I have planned this. This is how it reads in NLT. I have planned this in order to display my glory through Pharaoh and his whole army. I have planned it. I have orchestrated it in order to show Pharaoh and his whole army something. After this, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. They were convinced. So, of course, the planning after this, they'll know that I'm the Lord. The Israelites camped there as they were told. When the word reached the king of Egypt that the Israelites had fled, Pharaoh had his officials change their minds. What have we done? Letting all those Israelite slaves get away, they asked. So Pharaoh, he harnessed his chariot and called up his troops. He took with him 600 of Egypt's best chariots, along with the rest of the chariots of Egypt, each with its commander. He was what? Dead set on bringing those, uh, the children of Israel back. Each with its commander. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. So he chased after the people of Israel who had left with fist raised in defiance. The Egyptians chased after them with all the forces in Pharaoh's army, all his horses and chariots, his charioteers, his troops. The Egyptians caught up with the people of Israel as they were camped beside the shore where God told them near uh, Pi-Haroth, Pi-Haroth, across from Belzephon. As Pharaoh approached the people of Israel, they looked up and they panicked. So what happens with us normally? When we have not put our eyes on God and we see that the enemy is approaching us, something bad is getting ready to happen, we have panic attacks. Oh my God! God is in control. He's already what? Planned this whole thing out. As Pharaoh approached the people of Israel, they looked up, they panicked, and when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them, they cried out to the Lord and they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? And of course, they don't have that mind of God. Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. And you know what that says to me? That although he was there to deliver them, he said, they said, it's better to be a slave. They had a slave mentality. We just celebrated what we call uh, uh, a new holiday, uh, Juneteenth, Juneteenth. And with that holiday, yes, we are, we are um, recognizing the fact that slaves were, were, were free. They, they got the word late in Texas or whatever. But I think we can learn something from even this particular scripture. That we no longer want to be slaves in our mind because we have a tendency to remember things that didn't go right from the past. 
or things that held us back. So here they are saying we it was better for us. It is better a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. It's never better to be enslaved or to be commanded by someone that there's no freedom. All right. And although we have that holiday, we do not celebrate celebrate the holiday itself and forget that there are other things that are being put in place to keep us what confined uh, with the voting rights and all those things. And that's another political discussion and argument. But we won't go there. But we can't get comfortable with just, oh, we got a holiday. No, we've got to keep working and praying. Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. And this is something I think we all need to remind ourselves constantly over and over. When we run up against obstacles, we have to remind ourselves the Lord himself is what? He's fighting for us. Just as they had that, that, that cloud by day and that pillar of fire by night to indicate that God had not left them, we need to remind ourselves that the word says he will never leave us nor forsake us. The Egyptians you see or the problems you see right now will, will not always plague you. All right. We don't want to get comfortable with the thought that I'm going to always do bad. God has a plan. God has a plan. He says the Lord himself will fight for you. Next, this question. What does it take for you to believe that God is with you? What does it take for you to believe that God is with you? He's done everything for them up until this time. He's guiding them. He's directing them. The next verse says, go forward. And I think that's what God is saying to all of us today. Amen. Go forward. And everything, everybody knows what, what, well, let's say not everybody, but the rest of the story is, of course, he parts the Red Sea and the children are able to go through on dry ground. And then, of course, it comes back and covers the enemy, uh, the Egyptians, as they pursue them. But go forward. Amen. God has a plan. The strategy in, in Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, for I know the plans I have for you. How many really believe that scripture? I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are planned for good, not for disaster. And anybody ever think that God sets you up to see you fall? That's erroneous. That's false doctrine. That's not true. He says they are plans for good and and not for disaster to give you a future. So we can't see right now. That's why by faith we have to believe and trust that God has everything under control to give you a future and a hope. They panic, church. We panic when we don't what sense that God is still with us. We panic when we don't believe that we can go forth and accomplish. We panic when we think everything around us is going to fail. And God was saying to the children of Israel, go forth. The Lord himself will, if you've got God himself fighting for you, the earth is his footstool. You know, he's a big person, a big, a a big being. If you've got God himself fighting for you, why do you doubt that God can't what? Open a door that no man can open or no man can close. Our success is in Jesus Christ. Amen. A strategy that's a plan of action or policy designated to achieve a major or overall aim. God has a a major Overall aim why he's working in getting the children of Israel out of Egypt. And likewise, he's got an aim, a major purpose, the aim and what he wants to do in our lives. 
I want to share this scripture. This is not one that I gave you, but you know this scripture. In Joshua, the first chapter. Joshua 1, verse 8. He's got this plan, church. All we have to do is what? Follow God's plan. He said in, in, in 1, 8, in Joshua 1, 8, he says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. That's his plans for us. That's his strategy for us. Amen. The outcome is going to be victorious or glorious. But watch how God thinks. He said, take this book of the law. He said, meditate in it day and night. He said, then you're going to make your way what? Prosperous. So there is no, no, no prosperity plan outside of what? Reading and meditating in this word of God. People try to sell you a prosperity plan. You can't sell a blessing. But God tells his people how to be blessed. He has a strategy so that we will not be failures, that we will not always be broke, that we will not always be what? Paycheck to paycheck. Amen. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you'll make your, you'll meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Not some, all. For then you'll make your way prosperous. Then you will have good success. The mind of God reading what you might say few simple scriptures or meditating in a few simple scriptures, we may not be able to understand how is that going to put money in my pockets or give me a business or open up those doors and, and put me in, in, in places that I really want to go and be. But he said, just, just give him some time. Meditate in my word. Watch how you do it. Don't meditate in it um, on Sunday morning only, but meditate in it. Be consistent in giving yourself to God. Meditate in it day and night. I want to go to the head of the class. I want to be this. I want to be that. Meditate in it. We're not supposed to be a broke people. Crying broke. He said, no, no, no. He said, it, you'll make your way prosperous just by that. God's strategy and the way he's already designed for us to prosper as a people, didn't deliver us, amen, didn't bring us so that we got a, a federal holiday now for us to still be in the same state like he brought the children of Israel out. No, not to stay in that same state of mind, but to have something. That's the kind of God we serve. He's not a God that's taking and I've seen some bad examples of people who are taking from the people of God and, 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 and then manipulating them to believe that there's a blessing just by doing this. And that's not his style. Here it is right here in, in, in black and white. He told us what to do in order for us to be successful. We think it might be in the lottery. That's not how you're going to make your way successful. He said, study this word. Meditate in this word. That's how your success will come. Giving yourself to that. You know what that, that, that also says? I am cutting out all of those uh, um, distractions. Because I'm, I'm, I'm so in touch with what God is saying in this word that I'm looking at what he's prescribing. He told me that I'll be the head and not the tail. I'm going to be prosperous. I'm looking at what God is doing. What God is saying. And what God says matters how are we gonna stay in the place that he wants us to be we got to follow him god has a strategy that works
works. That works. It's not trying to cramp your style. It's trying to give our lives some style. It's not trying to what take you away from the things that you enjoy. He's trying to help you to what? Maneuver and get the best out of life. He planned for the children of Egypt to be prosperous. I mean, the children of Israel would be prosperous when they left Egypt. It was all planned. It was all orchestrated. Likewise for our lives today. And you have to trust him and believe him. But without faith, the Bible says, it is impossible to please God. It's impossible. So you need faith. You won't see this. Amen. You won't see. But faith is that substance. We hope for it. But we have to trust that God will what? Strengthen us and build our hope and our faith in him. I know we serve a God who is always on time, who is always with us, never leaves us. He's omnipresent. God knew that, you know, and, and for those that start panicking because trouble comes your way, God knew that that was going to happen. It's all a part of the, his plan. I mean, he sees all of these things. I mean, there's a purpose. Things come up, there's a purpose. But at the same time, we have to realize to stay how important it is for us to stay focused. To stay focused. So you're now complaining about everything that's not going right. God knew that that was going to be something that was going to come up. But he's got this. Just hold on, as they said years ago when we were growing up, hold on to God's unchanging hand. God has a strategy that works, church. That strategy that works. It's a simple plan. I mean, it's an easy one to follow. Amen? But it works. It works. And I pray that God will give you uh, a greater understanding of, of this word even today. Um, I'm, I may have shortened it and, and said some things just to, to clarify, but um, I pray that God will give you a greater understanding as you exercise yourself in Scripture, in the Word of God, and as you take God at His Word. Amen. Praise the Lord. A plan of action. He has a plan of action for us. So for all of us this morning, go forward. If you have stopped in your tracks and you have thrown your hands up and thrown the towel in. All right. The word of God this morning is go forward. Praise God. Bow your heads for prayer. And maybe you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus in your life. You can do that this morning because you're going forward. And just repeat after me, Lord, I need you in my life. Come into my life this morning. Forgive me of all my sins, all the shortcomings, all the things that I've done to doubt you, God. Forgive me and cleanse me of all those wrong things, Lord, of wrong behavior. Con uh, convince me this day, O oh Lord, that your word is true and right. Forgive me, O oh Lord, for doubting you. I pray, Father, that you would also send forth and, and give me your Holy Spirit to keep me from this day forward. I thank you so much, Lord. Save me. Keep me from this day forward in the name of Jesus. Save me. Keep me from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Father God, I bless you and I praise you for the people of God. I thank you so much, Lord, that you have a strategy that works and it's always for our benefit. It's always that we might be blessed, oh God. I pray, Father, that you will help us and teach us continuously how to follow you and not get distracted. Move against the enemy, bind him on every hand, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Today, I want to proclaim it, Lord, that we will be blessed. I want to proclaim, oh God, today that we are a blessed people. 
I want to thank you, O Lord, for making us a blessed people. I want to thank you, O Lord, for revealing your truth to us so that we can continue to walk in those blessings that you have already planned for us. Father, we thank you. Father, we glorify you. And I pray, God, that there will be no one to discourage. I pray against any discouragement today, O Lord. But I pray that you'll surround us with the right people at the right time, the positive things in life. I thank you so much, O Lord. I praise you and I bless you. I I pray those uh, special blessings upon all of our uh, high school graduates and God, those that are matriculating and going on to do more in their lives, that you continue to stand with them, stand with their parents as well, oh Father, and be their strength. God, we just thank you today and we praise you, glorify you, Lord. I pray that you would keep your hands upon all of your people and especially for those that are traveling. Watch over them this day, O Lord, traveling mercies. And God, keep them, I pray, safe. We just give you all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. Father, you have a strategy that works, and we want to walk therein. We thank you, we praise you, and we thank you for being such a wonderful and awesome God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise the Lord. God has a strategy that works. It works. For all of those that are impatient, pray for patience. Amen. You've got to get stronger in your faith to endure. Glorify God. And, and we'd like for you to give this morning. I think I may have announced uh, maybe Last Sunday, uh, how we were able to meet our goal in the rice campaign. Thank you uh, so much for uh, your dedication in helping the the people of uh, of Haiti. Um, Now, we got to keep praying about this because I got a a text yesterday that um, the ports are blocked. So that means that things that are shipped in in terms of the food. All right, the ports are blocked. So we want to pray that God will open the hearts of those that are really kind of like trying to control things. But um, it's just another um, another hurdle that we, we, we want to get past. We know that God will um, unblock those, uh, those ports. But just keep praying, all right, because that means that the food can um, get into the people. But we were successful in our in our um, endeavors for the rice campaign. And I really, really thank you for um, your contributions. So give today your tithe, your offering. Go to abidingfaithcc.org um, and um, give your best. Amen. Give your best. Abidingfaithcc.org. Your tithe, your offering. Give your best as you continue to bless the Lord. And if God has helped you and blessed you in some faith, some form or fashion today, bless him with a, a, a gift, a, a thank you offering. Amen. Bless him. And we want to continue to do all that God has called us to do as a church. I pray that you will um, keep us in your prayers uh, so that we will move forward. All right. In the kingdom of God. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. And happy Father's Day again to all of those brothers, men grandfathers, uncles, those that have stood in the gap uh, for countless, uh, uh, for, for children and young people and adults, even today. God bless all of you. Have a wonderful day in, in your celebration. Amen.